Do you know design of tension members is one of the simplest design that you could do? In this tutorial, I will give you a practical example on design of bracings in steel buildings. This is part six of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, please have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examined life. In this tutorial, I will talk about design of tension members and I will solve four practical examples. These are four examples, first starting with staggered splice connection, then tension members in bracing, third is tension members in trusses, and finally bolted and welted leg angles in trusses. The fourth one is something that I did not discuss in lecture, so I will briefly touch upon the formula that we are going to use in design of these leg angles. Firstly, I want to talk about this two-page design recipe that is included in the description down below. It is part 05 and 06 tension members handout. It is a two-page summary of whatever we have talked about in lecture and in tutorial, and it gives you all the formula that are needed for you to design tension members, starting from ultimate resistance, plastic resistance, the formula for staggered bolts, and a formula for leg angles as well. Leg angles are something which I wanted to talk about. I will talk about these formula in a, in a minute. So first, a brief description of the formula that we are going to use for leg angles. For leg angles, which are connected with unsymmetric members like T-sections or channel sections, eccentricity has to be considered. A single angle in tension connected by a single row of bolts can be treated as concentrically loaded over an effective net section. Design plastic resistance remains the same for leg angles. Ultimate resistance will be different. If there's one bolt, if angles are connected with one bolt, then we will use this first formula. If angles are connected with two bolts, then we will use the second formula. If they are connected with three or more bolts, a single row of three or more bolts, then we will use the, the third formula. Where beta 2 and beta 3, these are reduction factors. And E1 is the distance from the end to the center line of the bolt in the direction of applied shear. E2 is perpendicular to the applied shear, and it starts from the center of the bolt to the end. And P is the pitch that is distance between two bolt holes. And for, for different pitches, if P if P1 is, is less than or equal to 2.5 D0, then we will use these values for B2 and B3. If P1 is greater than 5 D0, then we will use these values. For an equal leg angle or unequal leg angle welded along its larger leg, the effective area will be equal to gross area. And for an unequal equal angle connected by its smaller leg, A net is taken as the net area of equivalent equal leg angle. So this is the, the second option and this one was the first option. Now the design process is pretty much similar. Only difference is going to be that NURD for leg angles will use these uh, three formula except that other design process is similar to what I talked about in, in the lecture. I will straight away move to our first example of tutorial, tutorial which is staggered splice connection. A flat bar is 20 mm wide and 25 mm thick. It is used as a tie. M6, M20 bolts are used. We have to work out the tensile strength of the tension member. Assuming the grade is 275. Here, a couple of things should be noted. The S is the staggered pitch. It means that the distance between two holes. So this is S, which is 90 millimeter, and P is perpendicular to the applied applied load which is 100 and there are two failure uh, sections over here one is red red is passing through only one bolt and this means that when we work out a net it will simply pass through one bolt and the blue section on the other hand it is passing through two bolts and that is the staggered one that we are going to consider so the first thing is to find out fy fy is 275 and fu is 430 for anything which is less than 40 millimeter we got these values from table 3.2 one. Width of the table is 200. Thickness of the table is 25. When we multiply these two, we get the gross area of the section. Once we've got the gross area, then we will work
work out ANET. Now, number one ANET is for red uh, failure section, where only one bolt was passing. So that's why summation of D0 is only 22 times uh, 25. And from here, we get value of ANET. And then we use this ANET for a staggered portion. Area is 5,000 and T is 25. Here, N is 2 because the failure plane blue was passing through two bolts. So that's why we write 2 over here. And 22 is diameter of hole. S is the staggered pitch, which was 90. This is the staggered pitch, which is 90. And P is 100, which is pitch, which is perpendicular to the applied forces. And we get A net as 4406. Now we have to choose the smaller of these two. Smaller of these two is this one, which is 4406. Once we get A net, the next step is simply to put it into these two formulas. So NPL, RD, AFY, where gamma M naught, we get 1375 kilonewton. And NURD, which is ultimate resistance, 0.9 A net. F u over gamma m2. We use this smaller a net which comes from here and then 430 is ultimate strength. Now using this we get 1550 kilonewton. We have to choose the smaller of these two. So NPLRD 1375 and NURD is 1550. Smaller of these two will be considered as tensile resistance of the plate. The first example is done. Now I will move to tension members in bracing. So I'm going to solve part B of this second example a vertical bracing is to be designed to resist a reversible horizontal wind force of 100 kN and the grade of a steel is given the bracing is to be positioned 6 meter apart and the story height is 4 meters and the bolting is given the the first part of the question is very simple it says that what's the difference between a plate section and circular hollow sections the the difference is that in circular hollow sections it, it will be difficult to connect when we use a cross bracing the connection is the difficult part for circular hollow sections it needs to have some gusset plate so that it needs to be connected in the middle. On the other hand, for uh, flat plates, uh, no connection is needed. Simply you cross them on top of each other. Now we have to determine the suitable uh, section for bracing. First thing first here, a simple sketch shows that 100 kN is applied. Grade of steel is S275 and I need force in the bracing. So horizontal force is equal to resultant times cos theta, where cos theta is adjacent. If this is theta, adjacent divided by by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is 213. From here, I get the resultant as 120.2 kN. The design force in bracing will be equal to factor for variable action, which is 1.5 times the resultant. So from here, I get design force as 181 kN. Now I'm trying 100 by 8 plate plate and assuming M20 bolts with 22 mm diameter holes. So let us see how we can find out its ultimate capacity. The first thing is I have to get a FU and FY from table 3.1. So FU and FY from table 3.1, it's obtained as 275 and FU is 230. Well, first one is simple NPLRD is AFY over gamma M0. I simply take the area of the plate, multiply it with 275 and times it with 10 raised minus 3 to convert it into kilonewtons. I get 220 kilonewtons. The next thing is I want to find out NURD. For this, I need A net. So A net is equal to A minus summation of D0 into T. A is the gross area, which is 800. D0 is 22 times 8. I get A net. And if I put this A net back into this equation, FU was determined earlier from table 3.1. If you put all these values and multiply with 10 raised minus 3 to convert it into kilonewtons, you get 220 kilonewton. Gamma M2, remember, is 1.1 in the UK. This is according to UK NXJ for Euro Code 3. In Europe, gamma M2 factor is 1.25. So in some of the books, you will see that this factor is 1.25. Now here, these two capacities are the same. So this is the reason that I will simply adopt the smallest one, but because they are same, so it's 220. NED over NTRD, it gives me value of 0.82, which means that this is fine. So the second example is finished. Now I move to the third example, which is tension members in, in trusses. This is the important example. In this example, we have a truss. This figure is for lattice girder, S275 steel. The flow load is given, which is unfactored, 5.75. The variable action is given as well. The layout of lattice girder is given. Now here, out of the plane dimension, 
dimension is three meters. Now, out of the plane dimension is not visible over here, but it will help us find the loading at the points. The distance between lattice girders is three meters. First, we have to use square hollow sections and welded sections for members to see if they are working fine. So here you will see that in this pattern, the tension members will be bottom cords. So we will be designing bottom cords. The compression members will be top cords and we want to design the diagonals as well, which will be in compression. HEA profile, HEA and UPN, these are European profiles. HEA is a wide flange section profile. UPN is a channel section profile. So some of the section properties you may not find in the UK section tables, but simply a Google search of these will give you the section properties. So let's move on. The first thing first, we have to find out the, the total load, the factored load. So multiplying variable action with factor 1.5 and permanent action with 1.35, I get 13.75 kilonewton. Now this is distributed on the floor. We need for trusses, we need forces at the joints. So let us see how we can find out these forces at the joints. Now here I have 13.75. If I times it with the distance that it is distributed, that is distributed 1.5 from one side and 1.5 meter from the other side. Three meters and other three meters is out of the plane. So it gives me 123.8 kilonewton. Now same logic can be used for this corner force where you multiply 13.75 with this distance is 1.5, 1.5 and 3 meters is out of the plane dimension. In that way, you get the 61.9 kilonewton. Now structure analysis needs to be carried out to work out these forces. So you can use either hand calculations by using method of sections or method of joints or you can find out these values by using any software. I can quickly show you how we can find out these values using S frame new to dimensional and then I will click next 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 and then here I will use these trusses and and finish warrant truss the number of panels are five in here span is 15 and depth of the section is 1.5 I will choose this warrant truss and firstly I will remove these side members so I will uncheck everything and then I will choose these side members and I will choose this joint as well and then simply delete them and then again uh, select them over after that i will define a section quickly i'm not interested in deflections so i will choose whatever section is over here so this section is chosen this has been applied and then i will i will release the moments for the entire truss in that way moments are released then i will apply supports a pin support at left and a roller support at right. After that, I will apply joint loads. The joint loads were 123.8 and 61.9. So minus 123.8. And then I will simply choose these joints and minus 61.9. And I will choose the end joints. In that way, I've applied everything and that it is ready for analysis. So let's linear elastic analysis and click OK and name any name. And in that way, you get the results. First thing I want to see is reaction. So you can see that reactions are similar 309.5. And again, then Excel force diagram values are not displayed. So I will go to diagram and then display values. OK. Now you can see that 742.8 in tension. The values are really pretty much similar to this one, 742.6. There's a slight difference, but obviously the software and, and the method used here might be slightly different. And then again, we have 350.2 over here in, in the cord, so 350.2. So we have the same uh, forces. So you can use hand calculations uh, using method of sections or method of joints, or you can use a software to work out these uh, member forces. So once you have got the forces, then you can design these members. The bottom tension cord is designed for axial force of 742.6, which is here. And the diagonal tension members, they are designed for axial force of 350, which is which is here and which you saw that we found out in the software as well. And, and then we have to find out the so NED should be less than or equal to NTRD. From here, uh, the applied is given for the time being. Assume that apply is equal to the capacity 
capacity. So from here, you work out the required area. The required area is 27 centimeters square. And then you work out the required area for diagonal members as well. Simply, you put this into the formula over here. Then you work out the required area. The required area for diagonals is 12.7 centimeters square. Once the required area is there, then simply you go to section table and see what you can provide that is slightly more than the required one. So here required was 27. The provided is 28.5. And then again for diagonal members, SHS 80 by 80 by 5, the provided area is 14.9. The required is 12.7. It means that these sections will work fine. So this was for welded connections. We move to the bolted one. So for for bolted ones, again, procedure for finding area is same. The difference will be only in the, the gross area of HEA section is given. A gross area for two UPN or channel sections is given. HEA is equivalent to wide flange sections in the UK. We get this area. The diameter of the hole is 22. And from here, we get A net. So A net will be equal to the net bolted area of UPN section is given by A minus 2 T D naught. 2 here is that because we are using two channel sections not because we have two bolt holes from here we get a net and simply we put this a net back into the formula for nurd and i have used here in the book actually it uses 1.25 but i've changed it to 1.25 because this is the european book and then you can see that NURD is greater than provided it means that it is okay the book where this example is taken from is design of the steel structures to eurocode part four of design of tension members is related to design of leg angles. And I'm going to solve one problem related to bolted and welded leg angles and trusses. For solving this example, I will simply use the design steps which are mentioned in this part 05 and 06 tension members handout, which is given in description down below. So the first thing is to determine the axial load and then choosing a section and all these steps. And this time I will be following these NURD for leg angles. And then Finally, we will find out that if the applied load is less than the capacity of the section. This is the example which is taken from Design of Steel Structures by Da Silva, and it's page number 143, example 3.2. Consider the chord AB of the steel truss indicated in figure 3.13. Assuming it is submitted to design tensile load of NED 220, NED is given. The cross section consists of two leg angles of equal legs in steel S235. Now we have to design this. A member for two possible configurations. One configuration is welded connections and other is bolted connections. So this is steel truss and two leg angles are used for this member AB and details of welded connections is shown over here and detail of bolted connection is shown over here. Where phi is the diameter of the hole, this is termed as D0, 100 is pitch and this 50 millimeter, this is our E1. And then the cord is made up of two angles of equal legs but the connection is made made only in one of the leg. Thus, according to this clause 4.13 of Eurocode 3 part 18, which is related to design of joints, the effective area can be considered equal to the gross area. Now, if I go back again to the design steps, here you can see that the angles with welded and connections, this is the clause which states that for an equal leg angle or unequal leg angle welded along its larger leg, the effective area is equal to the gross area. We will simply consider the gross area. NED should be less than or equal to NTRD, AFY over gamma M0. FY is 235 Newton per millimeter square and A is the area of the cross section. So if we put these values in here, we will be able to find out the required area. Area. So required area comes out to be 9.36 and we are required to use equal leg angles. So let us use these angles 50 by 50 by 5 millimeter where 5 millimeter is the thickness of the leg. The total area will be two times area of individual dates. It gives us 9.6 centimeter square, which means that these leg angles are absolutely fine when we use the welded connections. All you need to do here is to provide sufficient area for a connection to resist the applied tensile load. Now, how about bolted connections? Here, everything was welded, so it performed really well. Do the same cross-section be okay when we use bolts? 
will bolts not result in lesser strength? So let us find out if the bolts are weakening the section or not. Certainly, by common sense, the tensile capacity is going to be reduced because of the holes. So let us see how we can uh, find out. There are two holes, so it means that the NTRD, the tensile capacity, should be minimum of NPLRD and NURD. Now, how do we come up with this NURD again? If you go back to, to tension members handout, you can see that when we have two bolts, we use this B2 A net FU over gamma M2. Now, how do we work out B2 for B2? We have to work out 2.5 D naught, 5 D naught, and see that where this pitch lies. If this pitch is less than 2.5 D naught, we use 0.4. If it is more than 5 D naught, then we use 0.7. Now here, FY is 235, FU is 360. Beta 2 needs to be determined. Now, first of all, we have found out the required area, which is the same step as we did earlier. 50 by 50 by 5 millimeter will provide the sufficient cross section. Now let us talk about NURD where we have to work out A net. Now here you can see we have two bolts but the failure plane is passing through only one bolt. So that's why we will consider only one bolt not two bolts. So if the tensile force was applied say if it was like this and if we apply tensile load then in that case the failure plane is passing through two bolts. But if we have no matter how many bolts in a single row if you apply tensile load certainly it's going to fail at first bolt and that's the reason we will consider only first bolt as as a failure plane now if we, if i had even four bolts then even if i had six bolts and if i apply tensile load over here the failure plane is going to pass through only two bolts so in that case i will consider only the two bolts here i will consider only one and here with two bolts i will consider two now firstly i need to determine this beta 2 factor so for which i have to work out 2.5 D naught. So 2.5 D naught is 45. 5 D naught is 90 millimeter. P1 pitch is greater than 5 D naught, which is 90. It means that beta 2 should be 0.7. So if P1 is greater than 5 D naught, which was 90, here it was 100, then it means that the beta 2 factor should be 0.7. Now, once I have this factor, I can put this back in here and then find out N U R D. Now, A net is equal to A minus 2 T D naught. Now, this two is not because we have two bolts. The failure plane is going to pass through only one bolt hole. The reason we have two TD because we have two lag angles on top of each other. So that's why we will use this two. And in that way, we get area A net as 7.8 centimeters square. Now, once we put all these values, beta two is over here. This is the uh, area A net and 360 is FU. And over here, it's been divided by gamma M2 factor because this is a European book. That's the reason this factor is 1.25. In the UK, we use this factor as 1.1. Now, this gives us NURD as 150.57. The applied, which is 220 kilonewton, is greater than NURD, which is the capacity of the section. This means that when we use a bolted connection, then applied load, tensile load, is actually less than the capacity. Now, what does this mean? It means that we have to revise the section by choosing a larger section. Now, we are using 60 by 60 by 6. The area is 13.82 and a net will work out in the same way as we did earlier 11.66 only thing which is changing is the gross area if we put everything over here a afy over gamma m naught this is nplrd this is giving us 324 about 325 kilonewton which is greater than applied it means that this is all right and the next is nurd now in nurd beta 2 factor it remains the same only thing which is changing is this a net because now, revised A net is different one, and F U remains the same. Gamma M two remains the same. We get two three five kilonewton, which is greater than our applied loading. When it's greater than applied loading, then we will say that this is all right. Now N P L R D three twenty four is greater than N U R D. Failure is non ductile. However, since this is not a design condition, the section can be defined by two angles. Accepted.